everybody. Welcome back to the Rant and Review of Pro Wrestling. I haven't talked about New Japan in a while. Some of you have pointed that out. Uh, the Destruction Tour came and went. There is a review that will be up. That uh, It is up. It should be up by the time you guys see this. Uh, if you want to go back and look at that. Uh, we also had the Royal Quest show recently. The big main event, of course, featuring Will Ospreay against Zack Sabre Jr. for the IWGP UK Heavyweight Championship. It was... As you would expect, a match between Will Ospreay and Zack Sabre Jr. Surprisingly enough, and I because I, I had pegged that they were going to have Zack win this match, especially since Zack just lost to Brian Danielson over in AEW, that he would get this kind of win to kind of offset that loss, but it didn't happen. Again, it's two different booking uh, committees anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, D- Will Ospreay winds up picking, the, picking up the win over Zack Sabre Jr., and uh, after the match, he's like, hey, man, you know, there are a lot of guys around the world to do this, but I'm the only one that the beats champions around the world. No one can touch me. He's on another level, all that other stuff. Jota Umino, of all people, comes out and challenges Will Ospreay. And he wants that UK championship. And Ospreay's like, all right, I'll do that if, if the great Ocon gets a match against John Moxley. Now that... Seemingly comes out of nowhere, but that is actually a pretty damn good thought that at the next big show, Power Struggle, I believe it's going to be, uh, we will get John Moxley versus the Great Ocon. Um, again, another one of these matchups that I had never thought about and then thinking about the two of them against each other, that could either be a disaster or it could be brutally brilliant. I don't know. But we're going to have to wait and see on that as it's coming up. We also, of course, have a bunch of tournaments coming up. World Tag League is on its way. Uh, one of the teams that's going to be on World Tag League this year that really, really intrigues me is the, the possibility of Blue Justice, Yuji Nagata, teaming up with his 40-plus year rival in Minoru Suzuki. Now, over the Destruction Tour, they were on opposite sides of this uh, Best of Seven series and uh, the series kind of wound up not kind of being a smudge. Nobody really won it. Uh, and in the very last night, when everybody was trying to be friends, and Master Wado wants to be friends with Desperado, and Desperado just kind of shook it, <laughs> Wado's thumb or Wado's uh, pinky or whatever, and then try to get away from Master Wado, who's all like giddy to be Desperado's friend and shake his hand. And then, of course, the guys that are probably going to hate each other forever. With uh, Shota Umino and Ren Narita, they kind of sort of shook hands after the match. And then Minoru Suzuki, Yuji Nagata, rivals since I think they've wrestled in high school or something. And like like legitimately, and then they've just been in the same universe for the last 40 years. And now they are possibly going to be a tag team because at that match, they did shake hands and then slapped each other and then shook hands and slapped each other again. Uh, So they love fighting each other, but Yuji Nagata and Minoru Suzuki, a tag team combination I think a lot of people never thought they would ever, ever see, is now possibly, probably likely, going to be a thing for World Tag League this year. Might be worth checking out. I usually am not a big fan of World Tag League. It's like my least favorite New Japan event of the year. I will check out probably a couple of the nights just to see Yuji Nagata and Minoru Suzuki team together. And I think that's what New Japan is thinking. People will come and uh, come out just to see that, that team pairing up with each other. The big question, however, now is that after the Destruction Tour has ended now, it is solidified that Tetsuya Naito will be challenging Sonata. The leader of just five guys. Of course, they got Uemura now taking the place of Kenamaro. So, you know, just five guys is back to being just five guys again. But Sonata will be defending the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship against Naito at the Tokyo Dome and Wrestle Kingdom coming up in just a couple of months. And I've been monitoring what the sentiment is uh, from a lot of people. Um, it's lukewarm. Um, it, from what it seems out there, some people were excited. Most people were kind of like, all right, you know, well, we knew this is what was coming anyway. And uh, ever since Sonata won the championship, it, it has been kind of like that's where this whole thing is going. Now, I have a question as to whether or not a lot of people seem to be lukewarm about this because of the matchup. Because the story on paper is really cool. Naito, the leader of Los Ingobernables de Japón, brings Sonata into New Japan into Los Ingobernables de Japón. Sonata kind of seen as the number two at times 
in uh, Lij, and sometimes people thought Evil was his number, the number two in Lij. Both of them, of course, then separated. Sonata going his own way, and then becoming the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, beating Kazuchika Okada. And you would think now with Naito trying to get that last main event championship roll call, that's been the goal since Wrestle Kingdom, God knows how long ago. Uh, Naito wanted to do that. This is supposed to be the fairy tale ending, but with New Japan and Gato and the booking, you never know because we thought this several years ago with Okada that we were going to get it. We thought it'd be get it. He did win the, the championship. He did win the main event, and then Kenta screwed up the roll call. So Naito, this is his last chance. Those knees are going. He's got to win the championship at Wrestle Kingdom. But again, a lot of I, I would not be surprised. Well, I would be surprised. I'd be stunned. I'd be a little angry too, probably. Uh, but I wouldn't. It, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility that they would book Sonata to win the match at Wrestle Kingdom against Naito. Uh, but then they still do the roll call anyway. I don't know. Um, maybe that's the compensatory thing. I don't. I don't know. Uh, the biggest problem I have had with this matchup, knowing that this is coming, I thought since May when Sonata won the title that they would be doing everything in their power to build him up and make him look like the strongest champion they possibly could. Uh, yeah, his faction was one of the weaker factions. It's kind of like they they were kind of like a mid-card faction that had the world champion in it, which was a little odd. And... Yeah, you'd expect maybe he would have to defeat a bunch of top tier guys in New Japan defending the championship, but he really didn't. He defended it against a returning young lion in Yoda Suji. Um, he really had, didn't have much tough competition in the G1 in his block. He had a bunch of rookies and Chase Owens, and he went undefeated in the block. Yay, you beat Chase Owens and a bunch of rookies. But then you go right into the first round, one and done, and you lost to evil of all people. I mean, I, I, if you ask me how could we possibly make Sonata look absolutely as weak as possible as IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, that, that pretty much would have been it. Hell, even at Forbidden Door, he was wrestling Jungle Boy Jack Perry, and he didn't even know who Jack Perry was and thought it was beneath the IWGP Champion to be doing something like that. That is what Sonata's reign has been. Not quite the giant mountain that uh, Naito needs to climb. But again, Naito, the, the story on paper, a guy that Naito brought into New Japan, goes off on his own, becomes a champion, proves that he's better. And then can Naito rise to the occasion against Sonata, who is now white hot as IWGP Heavyweight Champion, the top of his game ever. I can't say right now that I feel that Sonata is at the top of his game ever. I can't say that this is the best Sonata I've ever seen, and I think it takes away a little bit from the challenge in the main event, but they've got two months to get something building with it. I'll be curious to see if they try to do anything creative with the build to this match, or if they're just gonna, you know, do the paint by numbers thing. We're gonna have a bunch of multi-man tag matches and then a couple press conferences and some interviews, and then we'll just do the match and, Naito wins and we do the roll call. But again, sometimes New Japan will throw you swerve, sometimes they won't. And it's kind of a, that's kind of the thing. It's like, are they going to throw a swerve or are they not going to throw a swerve? But I want to know what you guys think about this. What do you think? Let your voice be heard in the comment box below. Is Naito and Sonata setting you on fire? Do you think it'll be a great match anyway? Do you think New Japan has maybe done a disservice to Sonata with the booking of his title reign? Or do you think it's exactly what it needs to be? Let your voice be heard. And until next time, I will see you guys here for more news, rumors, and commentary on the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling. Have a good day.